The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. For more information about the church, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. I'm Jeremy File, the pastor at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, and we want you Sunday. We're having services at 10 a.m., and we would love for you to be there in person, 4400 South Crockett. If you can't come in person, you can always stream us live at AccelerateChurch.cc. You can also type in Accelerate Church Amarillo on your YouTube. Look us up on Facebook. We're everywhere there. And we have a Christian school. My associate minister, Garrett Griffin, is with me here in the studio, and he is the administrator slash principal of Accelerate Christian School. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. How's everything going over there with the school? It's going good. We're <laughs> we're finishing up our third year here at the school and uh, preparation for the fourth year, our 2021-2022 school year. So we have 96 students currently at our Christian school. We are looking to add to uh, the school this next year, opening yeah. up a few more learning centers. Yeah, and that's so. the classrooms for those of you that don't, aren't familiar with what a learning center is, but yes. that's what we call the classroom is a learning yes, center. And uh, uh, yeah, we're going to open up two more of those. So that means if you are listening and you're interested, you want to take a look at it, you can go to our website, AccelerateChristianSchool.cc. That's, right. That's spelled A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E. I say that because I have a lot of people <laughs> that write us yes. and spell it E-X yes. like that. Now it's A-C-C, Accelerate christianschool.cc you can google it you can look at us look us up but it has a lot of information there online it sure does yeah there's application packets you can kind of see all the different programs curriculum that we use and see our staff yeah that's cool so check that out today we've been talking about having a word ruled life what's cool about our christian school is that's what we're training these young people to do we are is from teenage years up live a word ruled life yes boy if i could go back in time that's what i would make sure and do yeah and in the years that I tried to veer off there, say, no, no, no I want to stick with the Word of God. Amen. Because I found out already at a young age of 42 that when I serve the Lord and I do His Word, things go well. Yes, they do. Whether it's my marriage, whether it's my job, whether it's training my children, yes. whatever we want to talk about, my relationships, my friendships, if I'll be do- a doer of the Word, yes. then I end up being blessed and it just never ends. Never. It just never ends. That's right. There's so many blessings and it does include financially, it includes everything because I'm going to live a word ruled life. And I want to talk about this for just a minute when it comes to tithing. Yes. You're a finance guy. You have a business degree. Yes. You have a background in banking. That's where you worked before you worked here in the ministry uh, full time. And you, uh, you know a little bit about money. You understand how money mm-hmm. works and And you've taught me along the way different things when it comes to credit scores or just different stuff of understanding how finance works. And uh, so your background is is in finance. And when you just read the Word of God on the surface and you come across a Malachi 3.10. Right. That says, you know, bring you the tithes into the storehouse. And you do a study and you realize tithe means a tenth. Yes. Well, on the surface for a finance guy, you're like, now, wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it can challenge the natural way of thinking. Sure it can. If I have 100% of my income and God is saying, you bring me 10%, well, that means I'm left with 90%, right? Right, to pay the bills, <laughs> to do everything that you need to do in life. And Naturally speaking, yes, 90% is less than 100%. It sure is. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. But talk about the challenges coming from the background of finance yeah. and having your business degree kind of how that challenged you a little bit when you yes. first came and started hearing that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially because I had uh, a lot of my background was in lending, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we we lent people money for a living. And so, uh, you know, when I came into understanding what tithing was, I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. You're going to, you're going to, you have all these responsibilities, like your mortgage that you signed up for, your car payment that you signed up for, your signature loan that you signed up for, all these payments that you have to make or the bank's going to come get them. But you're supposed to pay God first. Now, it didn't take me very long, of course, to realize, okay, God is first, and these other things are subsequent. They come after it. But, you know, that's the world's telling you right now, take care of yourself. You need to make sure you're taken care of. Who else is going to take care of you but you? Yeah. And that, that that's what the world... But I've learned by the Spirit of God and by His Word, if you'll trust Him, if you'll seek Him first and his righteousness first if you'll seek him first he'll take care of all those other things yeah that more just like he said just like he said in matthew and he said it i think in luke as well but that's what he says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you 
But it doesn't make sense to give God my first to the natural mind. To right. your flesh, it doesn't make sense. But to your spirit, man, there's something about a peace that comes over you when you learn about Malachi 3 and you start activating it in your life and you, you start working the word in your life. There's a peace that comes over you and God shows himself strong on your behalf. Yeah, and then whenever you go in the New Testament to the book of Hebrews and you see that Jesus is our high priest. Yes. And he's in heaven. Ha. So the, we can't go to heaven. I mean, we don't want to die yeah. to give our tithe, right? No. So he's in heaven, and men here on earth receive the tithe. Yes. So people have a lot of times say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, Hebrews is New Testament. <laughs> Jesus being our high priest is he totally is priest. new covenant. Mm-hmm. And so this is the thing. When you decide, I'm going to get serious about being ruled by the Word of God. Yes. What you realize is this. That affects every single area of life. We've pretty much covered the whole gamut this week. Yes. But I'm thinking about this with finance because, you know, if you're out there and you're not tithing to your local church, you're missing out on a blessing from God. You sure are. And you're operating in a curse, not because God cursed you, but you cursed yourself. Right. That's what you have to see. See, some people have said, well, if I don't tithe, God's not going to curse me. I didn't say God's cursing you. You cursed yourself. Mm -hmm. The tithe belongs to the Lord, whether you give it to him or not. Yes. And so, Garrett, you think about it, though it challenges the natural way of thinking, okay? And even percentages, if you just write down the percentages, right? Yeah. You're like, well, if I operate from a 90% standpoint, making the rest of my budget, seems like I'd have more if I had 100% of my income. <laughs> right. right. Or I'll, give, I'll pay everything first and then give what's left over to yeah, the Yeah, and God that's, will understand. <laughs> that a lot right? of but see, that's that. not a word world life. No, it's not a word world life. And it's not, a, it's not the blessed life. If you want the blessing of Abraham, you can't operate with the Thomas kind of faith. <laughs> Come on. You can't sit here you and can't. say, well, when I see it, then I'll believe it. No. If I touch it, then I'll believe it. In other words, you go ahead and activate by faith the power of a, of the tithe, mm-hmm. because you say, I'm taking God at his word, and I'm going to be a word-ruled person that follows his word, yes. no matter what. That's right. And, and I know it's it's a challenge, because you can be offended. The Bible says in John 6, 6, 6, I'm going to look it up so I don't misquote it. I, w- I want you to get this. If you have your Bible, you ought to just look this up, make sure what this radio preacher today is telling you. It's the only New Testament book that has a sixth chapter with the 66th verse. I know that I know the chapter and verses were added later, but I find it interesting that if you look up John 6, 6, 6, mm. it says, from that time, many of his disciples, we're not talking about people in the multitudes that would come and hear him preach. You know, the thousands right. that he would feed. Right. There were 5,000 men one time, not counting yes. women and children. So that means there was a, probably at least 15,000 people there. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? At minimum, there was that many. We're not talking about the multitudes. We're talking about his disciples. Right. Many of them went back and walked with him no more. The reason why is because of the words he had spoken right before that. Yeah. You see, his word offended them. Yeah. They weren't word ruled. They were word offended. Yeah, they were. They got offended by what the word says. And maybe you listening to us today, you can relate to that. In fact, maybe we've offended you talking about Christian school. Mm Mm-hmm. Garrett, I know my dad's been a huge proponent of Christian education all of my life, and yes. I thank God for it. I'm a product of it. Yes. But I've watched him, quote unquote, this is what people say, run people off because of his stand on Christian education. The truth is, in that area, they didn't want to be word ruled. No, they didn't. Well, just like that, when we're talking about finances, we're talking about your marriage, whatever yes. we're talking about, the way you work, your job, if you're not word ruled, You're going to be offended when you hear guys like us telling you and challenging you to be ruled by the Word of God. Right. Yet, I'm telling you this, you'll be rewarded if you value the Word of God. You will. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich, and it adds no sorrow. Come on. That's That's what the Word says. The blessing of the Lord. How do you activate the blessing of God? By obedience, by tithing. By doing, being a doer of the word, that's how you activate the blessing of God in your life. And there's no sorrow attached to it. Yeah. Now, I've got a question for you. Just We didn't rehearse this, obviously, but have you come across someone that's a faithful tither that regrets that? Never. That's what's interesting to Never me Never in this. my life. I mean, ever have I. I. Everyone I've ever known that's a faithful tither, not one has regretted it. No, they testify of God's goodness. Now, someone listening says, yeah, well, that, I mean, you're talking to people that do it. Well, those are the ones I want to know. Because the yes. ones that haven't done it, I don't really care. What, I, I don't care what they have to say. 
Right. You know, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, so what? You haven't done it. So I don't you care what your opinion you is. You haven't allowed God to prove it in your life. And that's what's interesting when you go read Malachi 3. Uh-huh. God said, test me in this. Yeah, prove me. Yeah. Yeah, you stop and you think about it. It's always in any other area serious if you put God to the test. Like, you shouldn't test God. Right. Except where he says, test me. Where he says to. That's being a word-ruled Christian Amen. and a person right there, a disciple. I guess that's what gets me about John 666 right there. And that's why I brought that up today. Because I really want to leave that with you uh, here over the weekend. It's not really a positive scripture unless you're a doer of the word. Right. And the reason I want to leave that with you, I want to challenge you. Not just you, Garrett, but all of our listeners too. Be a people that refuse to draw a line when the word challenges you or corrects you. Yes. Look, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And every once in a while, it'll stick you. Yes, it will. <laughs> it and will. It hurts. It'll expose. It'll expose it those d- areas. It, it's able to divide between joints and marrow, ah. soul and spirit. That's yeah. one of the big problems we have right now, Garrett. A lot of the church in the United States is soulish in nature. They are. It's based on the soul. If it can move you soulishly, then, oh, that's Peter. We've that, That's God. That's what people think. And a lot of times in those soulish churches, the Spirit of God is not welcome. No. Because the Spirit of God will correct yes, and, and and cut between what's soul and spirit and say, that's just mm. you being soulish. Right. You know, and I, I'm saying that because just because you cry a little bit doesn't mean no. God is in whatever it is that's making you cry. No, he's not. I mean, not good always. night. Sometimes, but My not. My wife turned on a movie one time called The Notebook, made me cry. <laughs> God wasn't in that, though. No, he wasn't. You hear what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, like, come on. Yeah. Just because you're moved. Hey, you oversee our Christian school here, and we've yes. just got a couple minutes left on the broadcast here. Talk about Accelerate Christian School and the impact you've seen on your own children and how all of our listeners can, you know, check out information on us. Absolutely. We, me and Farrell, have seen our our three kiddos just come alive. They were already in church. They were already having a good home life, and we pushed them towards the Lord and told them everything we knew about the Lord but something about that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. The first part of that strand is our church, or the first part's our family at home, second part's the church, and the third part now is our Christian school. And to see my children flourish and so many other testimony after testimony of these students flourishing when the Word of God is is their foundation. It's their firm foundation that they're building their lives on. It blesses me. And so if you are interested in Christian education, please let us know. Give us a call here at the, at the school, 806-418-8913, or check us out online, acceleratechristianschool.cc. You can even hop on Facebook, look us up there. Um, but I just challenge you, if this is something that you say, you know what, I need to look into the school, give us a call. We are having a preview day here in April, but it doesn't matter if it's in April or if it's in August or in September. Give us a call. We do have open spots, but we there already is a waiting list, and so we would love to partner with you. Um, we are a church school, and I like to tell people that. So the doctrine of Accelerate Church is in Accelerate Christian School. That's right. Tell everyone uh, the date on the open house. Yes, it's April 22nd. Okay, and we're not calling it open house. It's it's a, it's a just a preview day where they can come in, sit in in chapel, um, see what chapel's about, because our doctrine is being preached. You're there, you're teaching, and the students put on uh, yeah, devotion for that's us. That's coming up soon. Yeah, and then they'll tour, and then they'll also get to sit down and question and answer. Awesome. Or feed them. Hey, Garrett, thanks for being here this week. Yes, sir. This has been a lot of fun, and we'll have you on again soon. Okay. You're listening to the Accelerate Church broadcast. I'm Jeremy Fowle, the pastor, and we want you Sunday at 10 a.m. If you want more information, check out our website, accelerate.church.cc. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast, and if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download the Accelerate Church app, which is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. Or if you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas. And our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.